What's going on guys? Ollie from Flight Comp again and we're gonna do just a quick video on the Prestige 2PK flap servo installation using the uh, servo ramen foam type IDS with X10 KST X10 mini servos. Um, I've already started really quick. This is how the tray comes just like this and it's got the bearing holder and some uh, shims or something spacers that you gotta clip off and this is the frame that I have prepared already as as you can see I've cut a huge chunk out of the back of it so here's what the back of the frame would look like out of the kit and here's mine and um, this is the servo, it has the horn on it already, and the, the bearing and the bearing carrier. Now we're going to use the smallest horn, which is just the end horn on this parts tree, because basically the smallest horn is the only horn that's going to fit under the servo cover. I tried uh, this horn and it stuck out above the surface of the wing, so we can't use that, so this is our only option. Hopefully we get enough travel out of that. And the reason I've cut this guy out, if we get the servo in here, um, you can see that back tab sticks out. It's proud of this edge. So I could have either ground the servo tab down a bit or cut the tray. And um, I opted to cut the tray because you also need to have the servo wire basically exit from this side too. We can't have it exiting out of these holes that are already in the tray. So we need to cut a hole for the servo wire to exit like that. And I cut a hole for the um, back mounting tab. And I'll just show you really quickly on the wing itself that it fits in there perfectly. And there's a little bit of forward and aft play in here. So even with that tab sticking out past the servo tray, uh, this whole assembly fits in the bay, no problem. So there we go, that's some, some little issues that are um, kind of particular to the flap servo installation. Again, we've done the marking um, for the center line. We have taken it from the bottom of the wing around the trailing edge to the top marked 11 millimeters, an 11 millimeter slot, and I have already cut out the foam and the um, carbon in the face of the flap in preparation for the horn. So um, I'm not going to go into as much detail as with the, uh, the tip panels because I already covered a lot of the stuff's the same, so you can look at that video for this and some other things and I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, keep plugging along on this and I'll get back to you guys when I have a little bit more done alright so I have actually um, applied epoxy in the channels I made for the uh, horns and both the horns are in place um, real quick I before I did that I also cut the channel through the wing for the control uh, rods or the arms and I did the same exact method as I did on the ailerons and I've also um, recessed on either side to allow the control horn nubs or whatever you want to call these to go inside the, the center panel here when we get the up flap deflection. Um, so everything is basically the same as the ailerons. The only difference here being that uh, on the ailerons we use the uh, half millimeter shims under these pins. And on the flaps, we're using three millimeter, uh, a three millimeter spacing. So I have three millimeter um, pieces of hardwood, basically three millimeter shims under the pins. On both sides, you want to make sure that the um, middle of the opening here on the horn is lined up with your center line for your travel for your arm on both sides. And if you're just curious. This is what my epoxy looked like. It's um, 
Laminating epoxy, very slow cure epoxy mixed with cabosil or aerosil, just a thickening agent, uh, a strong thickening agent. You can see it's not runny. It's thicker than mayonnaise or mayo. Um, and that's what I used. Can't really disturb this too much until um, these horns dry. So uh, after this is set up, the next thing we're going to do is... Uh, epoxy these plastic trays into the center panel and uh, then we can hook up the um, control arms so we actually we're going to um, epoxy these in and then we can run the arms in and hook those up and we'll be one step closer to being finished so okay just to wrap it up basically the same procedure as the tips except we're using a three millimeter spacing all right, guys, well, I've been doing a little bit of head scratching, trying to find the appropriate size control arm, as you can see here. Got a bunch of them cut out that I was trying. Um, trying to find the, find the right length arm to get the, the movement out of the flap that we're looking for. So, you know, 80 to 90 degrees of down travel and enough up travel. And as I already told you previously, um, I had started out with the shortest control horn in the uh, IDS pack. And basically, I ran into a problem because um, I found that the 77 millimeter long arm would give me enough down travel, but not hardly any up travel. And the 75 millimeter arm would give me up travel, but not nearly enough down travel. That's using the shorter um, control horn. If there was a 76 millimeter arm, I think the shorter horn would be perfect, and it would, everything would work out great. But I'm just—I wasn't just—I wasn't happy with what I was getting with this, so I've actually moved to the horn that is one size up from there so the second to shortest control arm or horn um i have it already i have this side already in the wing it's not glued in yet um so i mean that's that's fine but the thing is it's just barely flush with the top of the wing so I might have to end up cutting a hole in the plastic servo cover to clear this. Uh, now, again, this is using the KST X10 servos. Um, your experiences may be different with different types of servos because it's going to depend on um, where the horn output shaft is on the servo and what length rod you need so you know this isn't gonna be the solution for every single brand of servo out there i also tried flipping this over and using the shorter arms but um again i just couldn't get the right combination of length with the um short horn to make things work so if you're using kstx 10s use the 77 millimeter long arm which is measured from center of hole to center of hole and you'll get the best results with the second to smallest uh, control horn now the other thing I've done is so this this guy goes in the wing like this this would be on the flap this would be at the control horn and the horn would be like this right and so this, um, is that the way it go? Yeah, some, something like this. Anyway, so this, there's a rib on one side of the arm. You can see it right here. See that raised rib? It's like a reinforcement. And I found that it actually rubbed the top skin where it exits the wing. So basically, that rib would rub, so the rib would be facing 
uh, up and it would push up against the skin right here and really try to bulge it out so what I did was I just sanded that rib it's really hard to see I just sanded it down a little bit if I can get this to focus see that I just sanded it down with a Dremel tool and I also sanded um, this top portion right here so I sanded this down and then I went in I went in here just to help clear the uh, top skin so I have the um, trays glued in now I have epoxied the trays in and I there's a little bit of slop between the tray and the recess in the wing so I've glued it towards the front of the wing and towards the tip so just kind of butted it up against this edge and this edge. Um, the other thing I've done is I've shortened the wires on the servos. This is how much I've taken off. And I did that just because there's not much room in here to actually stuff the wires in. And also it helps to save weight. Uh, one thing I had to do that I was really of trying to avoid is I had to cut the tabs off the back of the servos. See, here's the tab here. Um, I really didn't want to do that just because if you need to change a servo at the field or in a contest and you don't have one that has a tab cut off, you won't be able to do it. Um, obviously, you could pre-prep a servo, which is what I would recommend if you have to install a servo like this where you've shortened wires and modified the servo case is just to get a spare and pre-prep it ahead of time keep it in your toolbox um, okay so I, I cut the tab off because basically when you install the servos the only place to stuff the wire is directly behind the servo like that um, you can't lay it on top or on the side or anything like that so Tabs are gone, and um, I have installed the control horns on the servo with the arms almost flat, pointing towards the um, flap. So this is the full down flap deflection position, and that is the way I've installed the arms onto the servos, onto both servos, as you can see there, um, and I made sure that I got the down flap that I needed in this position and um, also the um, up travel. Um, if you were to put this further up, you wouldn't get as much down, uh, full down flap. So that's the servo prep. Trays are glued in. Uh, now we just have to, you know, bolt these guys in.